to focus on nothing. Episode 68 of From Everyone. I'm here today learning from Jake and Caleb. Y'all are returning uh, from episode 7 and 23. And, All right. Uh, <laughs> joining us from <laughs> No I Seen. Uh, so I appreciate you coming in. I know we just dropped some new music. Yes. What is out right now? Where can people go find it? What is what is new to No I Seen? Yeah. Uh, we got Moonglade and Face of Death uh, that are out on any streaming platform imaginable. Uh, it's on YouTube as well. Uh, with a music video uh, done by someone very familiar to this yeah. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> very proud of that music video, of course. That is one thing we're going to dive into tremendously deep as we get into here. Uh, before I get into anything, I need to ask about Face of Death as a song title. I saw it, and it immediately took me back to, like, BME Pain Olympics, like, Faces of Death, like, all these, like, old <laughs> fucked up DVDs. And then I thought of you. And I was like, oh, this, is, this might be a Jake Green. Where is, where is Face of Death come from yet? Yeah, what, what is the song title come from? That's a funny song title. Because that song title was for a totally different song that we just didn't end up recording. Damn, okay. Yep. And then we just had this song that was heavy, and we were like, this was the vibe we were going for for this song. <laughs> okay. Let's just make this that song. And so I didn't even come up with it. I don't even. I wasn't even in the band when that was came up with. That was. I think Lucas came up with that. right? Yeah, it was like a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. Like he. It was like a demo that he had had for. Ever. And then we were just like, yeah, we're just going to not steal your demo, but steal your name. And it's one of those working titles. I assume he saw right, a yeah. video of someone like, on Twitter and it was like, oh, Face of yeah. Death, this is morbid and dark. And that's where this thing comes from. I'm sure. Yeah. I, I literally was like, yeah, BME Pain Olympics, Mr. Hands. I went through all <laughs> I was like, yo, did they really just shout out like <laughs> this dark era of high school? Uh, so I'm comforted to know that, yes, this is not an allusion to <laughs> <laughs> videos of people dying. At but, least as long as we know. You yeah, know yeah, I don't know yeah, where yeah. Lucas got it. Maybe Lucas was. <laughs> on a dark little path there. Lucas, my man, you're up next. I gotta get to the bottom of this shit. You've got some explaining to do. Yes. Uh, The two songs are out now. Uh, They're sick. Yes. Moonglade music videos streaming everywhere. Uh, Face of Death is also out. Uh, It's been fun to listen to both of them. So I'm curious of like where the two single ideas come from here. So I think normally when bands are starting starting to release things and I... I don't know what the fuck's happening next, but normally one song means there's more songs coming. So forgive me for making assumptions here. But... One song's out. Uh, normally, we just see one song. We see a music video, and we see all of our resources pulled into that. Uh, I think the challenge that we often run into there is, like, people hear the song, and it's like, now what? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I'm curious. Was that kind of your motivation here for dropping two songs? Was there someone who inspired you? Did you see another band do it? Where does the idea come to put two singles out together to kind of start this process? Um, I'm going to go turn down that fan because I can hear it. Yeah, so while yeah, you yeah. answer. So <laughs> it kind of came from Periphery. They did on their last album... The first singles were Wildfire and Zagreus, and they did a music video for one of them that they just dropped, and then they had the other one just as a single with it, and I just really thought that it got me really excited for their album, so when we were talking about how to release stuff, I was like, we should just do two, you know, let's give them like the standard single, like a good song with a good chorus kind of a thing. And then let's just give them something heavy to like smack them in the face. And it's like, you're getting both sides of us at once. Yes. Something uh, for everyone. One last tangent on the fan. If you guys get warm, we can turn it back on. Just okay. give me a no heads up <laughs> as we get going. Um, but anywho, yes. Um, I think the other brilliant move there is like when you put out a single, I think oftentimes people go, oh, this is what the whole album sounds like. And it's like no one song defines whatever the release might be. Like, I don't know. Yeah. And so I think when we put out one song, it's very easy to be like mislead people. And so is yeah. there some thought of like, if we put out two songs, we're giving a more honest picture of who no I scene is. And we're not like pigeonholing ourselves into one idea and sound. Yeah. I think it definitely like shows the like wide variety of sounds that we're able to pull off. Um, and like, I just wanted to give people like a taste of like both of those ends uh, right off grip, you know, um, you know, with, with a album, there's a lot of songs on there and like, in an era where a lot of bands are just pumping out singles yeah. all the time, you know, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of content to be made from that. So we just wanted to just, you know, come out strong, swing in. It's been like over a year or two since we dropped a song. So mm-hmm. wanted want to give people more than less. And yeah. even then it was only one song. It yeah, wasn't exactly. like a whole release. Yeah. Eternal Lung, probably two years, two uh, 2020. Half. So Damn, okay. four yeah. years. <laughs> right? 2020? Am I... 2021? Someone will fact check us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell us we're wrong in the comments. Leave a comment and tell us. <laughs> um, no, I think it's also smart that like when, when song, singles come out, I have the habit of burning through it. Like I just listen to the song a bajillion times, and by the time anything else comes out, I'm like, fuck this song. It's cool, but I need more. And I, I think you guys also buy yourself more time by putting two songs out of like yeah, that, yeah. that time for people to 
get tired of it, which inevitably happens if you listen to anything too much. Like, oh, yeah, of course. you've extended <laughs> that period. I, I always feel bad saying things like that. Cause like, I don't want to be like, people aren't tired of you, but like anything you listen to, like, I mean, Horizon's new album will get tired. I'm already tired of that. I listened to that like 10 times the day it came out. And then uh, I was yeah. like, all right, I got it. Like, Give me I, a month and I'll listen again. Dude, I actually haven't heard it yet. I yeah, gotta, really? I'm so late to that. I don't know. I'm so bad at checking out new stuff. I'm such like a creature of comfort that I just rather listen to the album that I know and love and like is digestible and white noise to me. And I'm so always yeah. so slow to check out the new thing. Um, I'm the exact opposite. I check the release radar every like Friday that it comes yep. out. I'm like, everything that's new, let me just check it out. Even if it's buns, I want to hear it. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder if like, I, I think to me, there's some element of like, I'm just getting new songs from video stuff. So I'm always digesting new stuff and trying to make new stuff. And then I yeah. think when I hear like the new Knocked Loose album that I was just listening to, it's like, it, it's like, I just need comfort. I don't need new things. I don't want new ideas right now. I just need to like chill. And somehow, yeah, yeah. yeah the new stuff fires up the part of my brain. It's like, what if, what if, what does yeah. this look like? What if, how do we do this? And it's like, I don't, I don't have time for that. And I think that's also where my, my SoundCloud rap and all the bad music I listen to comes from. It's like, I just need something that's not what I really care about and love to like numb me. White noise. Just, yeah. Literally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. White noise. And I, I don't like describing people who have, it's their life work. Like, I don't want to describe <laughs> your masterpiece as white noise, but in the context of what I am doing. Yeah. It yeah, kind of yeah, functions yeah, yeah, in yeah, that sense. Of course. Um, hell yeah. Where does this writing process start then? So I know uh, I was talking before the show, Jake, I think this is your first like time writing with the band and getting into yeah. into the studio with everyone, making this happen. Uh, where do these songs start? How long have these been in the pipeline? Where Where is Moonglade born? Um, Moonglade was mostly a Lucas thing. Okay. Um, we reached a point where we had most of the songs written, we wanted written, and I think we maybe had like two or three more songs we were going to write. Yeah. And then we just wrote like five or six instead, and we're like, all right, I guess we're picking now. And Moonglade was one of those. Lucas really just wrote that whole thing and brought it to us. And he spit the like tapping thing in the beginning. He was like, yeah, Jake will just change that to something that's like very reasonable. <laughs> and we go to the studio, and Chris Wiseman is Shut like, up. Yeah, no, like, you're just going to play what he <laughs> programmed in, like, just figure it out. It sounds good. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, I guess I got to figure it out. But besides, I think I changed, like, one or two notes in it to actually be playable. Besides that, it's pretty much just Lucas presented it that way. Caleb wrote the vocals, and that was history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one came together really quick. Yeah, It wasn't, like, one. much of a process. What does really quick mean? Like, like uh... Yeah, define really quick in the context of writing a song. From the time we heard Lucas's demo, it was probably fully recorded in two months, roughly. I don't remember the <laughs> timeline, to be honest. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, probably. I think Lucas wrote it in like probably like a weekend or so, not like a long amount of time, and then probably like a month and a half, two months, it was a done song. Hell yes. And then, uh, Caleb, are you like writing uh, writing melodies and going to the studio with melodies and lyrics set? I was just chatting with, I think it was Liam from Mortal, and I hope I'm mm -hmm. not misquoting him, who was saying that he just goes in and basically freestyles it. Like he can't really plan for it. He has to be in the moment and like feel the thing to get the thing out. Are you very like premeditated or are you more in the moment? Yeah. I mean, I wish I could be in the moment, but <laughs> okay. I'm like, yeah, a, that's I'm like crazy. an anxious, <laughs> nervous wreck. Like I would, I would be freaking out if like, you that's know, me too. Yeah, like, yes. if I just had to like freestyle on the spot. No, but like, yeah, I definitely prepare uh, in advance. Uh, you know, I, I like, like, I like to listen to the song, you know, like the instrumental and get like a vibe from that. And then mm -hmm. that's when I come up with like the concept and the theme of the song and then just go from there. And uh, yeah. how much is it like, how much is it Caleb writing? How much are you saying like, Hey, Jake. Hey, Lucas. Hey, Sam. Here's a chorus. What do we think of this chorus? Um, so we don't we do demo um, some of the stuff. Not all the time. It's like usually like if I'm like spotty on something, I'll be like, hey, Lucas, like I'm gonna come over and we're gonna just track this to make sure it's all mm -hmm. set. Um, but sometimes like, you know, like off like right from grip, it's just like I know what I'm doing, you know, like I'll, I'm gonna go in and do this, you know, so and it's like a, a mix of both. I would say like 90 to 95 percent of it is just Caleb having an idea. And then there's like that 10% where we're in the studio and he's like, well, what if I did this note or this yeah. note? Or he, Adjustments. Yeah, there's very yeah. few songs that he didn't have at least 90% ready to go when we were like getting into the process. Are you a pen and paper guy? Are you in your phone? Are you doing it all like in your, like talking to like the voice app? Like, yeah, what's <laughs> yeah. your, yeah, what's def your Definitely you on uh, like, like phone. I use Google Docs exclusively for everything just because it's very organized. Interesting. Um, I feel like yeah. I can't think in Google Docs. I have to like do it all on paper and then like put it into Google Docs. Yeah, so, like, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Paper is where my brain happens and then Google Docs is for you guys. Basically. <laughs> 
<laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Are you a similar thing? Like, yes, yeah, so you're able to think in Google Docs and that, that's just been how, how it works for you? Yeah, well, like, I'll usually, like, just, like, listen to an instrumental, like, a thousand times. Like, like literally yeah, a thousand like, I, times? That I, sounds I, like an exaggeration. I, I should not. I should have pulled up, like, the numbers, like, on my, like, Apple, like, on, like, mm-hmm. iTunes. I literally have, like, the instrumental, like, plays numbers. They're, like, insane. Like, I... I, I just like, one song yeah. was, like, 700 something. Yeah. Before we had recorded it. And I was like, what? Depending how much of the song is, like, giving me problems, I'm like, yeah, it gets pretty up <laughs> is there. Is this, like, you in a dark room? <laughs> like, just, oh, oh, yeah. Is that, no, like, no, no, like sensory deprivation, just this one thing happening? Nah, I'll, like, listen to it over and over and over again, just, like, re- like pick up on, like, patterns and melodies and stuff like that. And usually, like, I do this at work, too. Int- okay, yeah. so it's kind of, like, Because, so, like, like, I can listen to music while I'm at work. So, mm-hmm. like, I'll just, like, listen to the instrumental and just keep thinking and thinking and thinking. And sometimes that's, like, a kind of a bad thing because then I'll get like very much like I don't know what's like good anymore I'm just I, like yes. yeah yeah because I've listened to it like a million times so that's always uh, the it's like a it's a good and a bad thing you it's know? always the challenge that I run into as I'm working on videos it's like yeah I'm dissecting each piece so much and by the time I'm to the final it's so hard to be like am I happy am I sad and it's like I have to just kind of trust that I was uh, my philosophy is like if each micro detail I'm going to make perfect and whatever the perfect is and I'll go back and change whatever perfect is but it's like I kind of have to trust that each step of the way I was doing my best because by the time I'm at the final it's it's almost null and void. It's like I can't really take this whole thing and move it. It kind of yeah, is the yeah. sum of these a thousand. You can make yeah, little tweaks deci- at that point. But yeah. yeah. Most of those decisions have been made at that point. Yeah. And it's very strange. And I think it's very different than vocals where it's like you can, I guess once it's tracked and done, it's kind of done. But like you can spend years going uh, the, uh, yeah. then. Like there's so no, it's, many. It's bad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> like like I've, I've gone through like a couple times on like vocals. Like like I went back to Sean's and like Reed did stuff just mm-hmm. because I, I could do that forever. Like like literally forever. So like sometimes you just got to be like, nah, this is it. You know. When do you draw the line in the sand? When I'm satisfied. Okay. Yeah. Like when I feel like, yeah, like this is good. You know. Do you, um, I, like I, I don't like to. Didn't I, we also finish like the day before? Oh yeah, like, didn't we like, December thirty first? Like, All right, this yeah. is the. I think yeah. it was like December. Yeah, literally. Okay, there, so there, that's there, how we know we're yeah, done. You would have kept going. Oh yeah. yeah, like I could, I could have kept going for sure. I, I um, think we did all reach a point at that time where we were satisfied and we were like, "This is a good stopping point." But I mean, I we could have worked on it for another ten years. Yeah. Oh yeah. Not yeah. been hundred percent satisfied. It is the hardest thing to me. It's like everything we want to put out has to be a masterpiece, but there is value in like putting stuff out every week. And I I think the podcast to me has been a a really good reminder of this, of like, I would love the, when this show started, I was thinking about doing this all green screen of like every week going, okay, no eye scene coming. What does no eye scene look like? Let's build a set for no eye scene. And then every week, and then it's like a a visual advertisement and it's unique to you guys and it's unique from other podcasts. And it's just like, it felt, and it was like, that's not sustainable. Like that is the best version of this. And I, to this day would love to be able to do that, but like, I can't build a green screen set for this and for music. Like that, just, this would have to be your full time job. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't be able to do videos if you were doing. A hundred percent. And I don't want that. This is very much a fun little side project that I enjoy doing. It's a fun way to chat with you guys and like hang out with people. But like, yeah, it has to be number two. And yeah, yeah. it's this weird thing. And I, yeah, with you guys, there's a similar problem there of like, you can go forever. And there is like an A plus version of like, what if we spent a bajillion dollars and flew to Germany to go get this mixed in? <laughs> like, you know, there's always yeah, yeah, whatever that yeah. bajillion dollar version of this thing is. Uh, and it's but always at tough. a certain point, you just got to make a decision that it's like, maybe we could put a bajillion more dollars in it and get the A plus version. But we're at like a 95 right now. And like, I don't have a bajillion dollars to give. This is what we got. This is perfect. Literally, yes. And it is more important that it is out than that it is perfect, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Especially where we are. Like, I think maybe for Bring Me the Horizon, you could flip that argument. Be like, no, it's more important that it's perfect than it's out. And that's what we saw with them delaying the album a year, nine yeah, months, whatever yeah, the fuck yeah. it was. But like with us, it's like, no, it's more important to remind people that we exist. We're doing it. We are competent at it. We are good yeah. at it, whatever. Yeah. Whether you think it is good, excellent, incredible, like it's more important that you have that perception in the first place than that it matters. And I, I come back, I got this advice one time that everything is done at 80%. And I don't like that because it. I'm such a, yeah, I'm like you guys. I want to tinker forever and make it perfect. But there is some sense that I try and remind myself of, of like in the context of a music video, by the time I'm in the final touches and with Moonglade, when I'm like, uh, I went for the the mirror shots. I ended up like I went so long. Like, are they blue? Are they green? How much blue? How much green? And it's like that's me. Well, like, right. Yeah. I feel like there's like so much you can get lost in like the subtleties of anything. Like, there's so much like you could just do to nitpick and nitpick and mm-hmm. nitpick. And like that's like the artist brain. Yeah. You know, like you're never like you. You feel like there's something more you could do 
when like in reality, it's probably fine. Yeah, if we weren't <laughs> those people, we'd probably right. all be bad at what we do. 100%. Yeah. And that's where that 80% <laughs> thing is really valuable to me of like, okay, by the time I am worried about blue or green, it's like everyone else already, we're, we're talking about Moonglade before, it's like I, I was sharing that when I first got into music videos, I would like want to go look at the comments and expect people to be like, great video. And it's like, no, most people say good song, bad song, sounds like this, like it's, it's almost never about the video, and if it is, it's this video sucks. Like it's very rare that someone <laughs> if goes. If they're noticing the video, it's probably because it's a bad one. It's yeah. probably terrible. And so then it's like, <laughs> why am I obsessing about the blue and the green? It's like for me, but understand that it's for me. Understand that in the context of the people who are consuming this thing, like it's not make or break. Like they are yeah. gonna like the song or not like the song, and probably never think about whether the light was on or off, blue, green, whatever the fuck, yeah. little. Well, how how much noise was in the video? How much yeah, flickering textures, all that bullshit that like keeps me up at night. It's like, yeah, there's some healthy reminder there that makes me like more comfortable. Of like, okay, do it for me, do it till I'm happy, but don't worry about perfect because like no one else is ever gonna consume it in that sense. Uh, to your point, Jake, I was listening to an uh, interview with Brian Garrix, which is why I was listening yeah. to Knock Loose. Yep. Um, he was on a, it was funny, I woke up this morning, I listened to a lot of comedy podcasts, that's like the other big thing I listened to, uh, and Brian was on one of them, and it was this weird, like, crossing that, that's a That's kind world of a weird mashup, yeah. Yeah, it was sick, and it was really Made cool to Made just hear. for you. <laughs> Literally, exactly for me, that's, a, that's what I felt like, too. I was like, yeah, thanks, thanks, fam, shout out, Ian. Um, it ruled, and it was cool. Uh, one thing he said is that as they've been growing, as they've been doing Coachella and all these, like, mainstream things, uh, he made some comment that, like, and of course he's somewhat biased here, but he uh, said that, like, hardcore kids run the world. Uh, and what he meant was that, like, all the stage managers, all the managers, all the TMs, like, all those guys are all metal guys. And a lot of them, yeah. they are all yeah. working Coachella. They've all grown into pop. They've all grown out of metal, but they yeah. come from this. Uh, and Brian's theory is just, like, that metal is such a grind to get going. Yeah. That, like, oh, yeah. if you find any traction in this, it's a result of so much hard work, so much dedication that, like, yeah, being a TM is the next obvious thing to do that... I don't know, maybe a rapper who's relying more on flash and flair and clout to get going. It's Might like, not be able it to doesn't quite, it out. the skill set doesn't quite translate. It's a different, yeah. like, he'll get into uh, marketing, modeling. Like, there's other things that that skill set transfers to, but it's not the TMs, the behind it's the scenes. It's not the stage thing. hand, backhand kind of thing. And it was yeah. really interesting to hear him uh, articulate that. And it kind of made me feel good about what we're doing. It's like, uh, this is it. This is like, it is about this thing of just put the song out and keep putting the song out. I know you guys have been doing this forever. Like, this isn't by any means the first release, and it's by no means the last release. Yeah. And I think there's something beautiful in that process and hearing him from the top of the world say it it's like yeah there's something special in our scene and there is something like to being a niche community that shouldn't work and by pursuing this thing that shouldn't work it really uh, yeah sharpens iron really brings the best out of us and there's something really motivating about that to me and it really it cuts out the people that don't have that iron too the Mm -hmm. people that can't take it they're not gonna stick around with it they're gonna realize that and move on with their life. I have seen, I love that you said that. I've seen this a thousand times in other photo video peers uh, and I'm going to leave names out here because I'm not going to throw course, anyone of the bus publicly, but certainly there are people you come across and it's like, yo, fuck that guy. And not like, not that I think he's bad, not whatever, but it's like, you're not nice to people. You don't take care yeah. of people around you. You are hard to work with. You're inflexible, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure with other bands you've been and someone comes and like kicks you out of the green room because they need their quiet and it's like no <laughs> shut up like there's dickheads in every I scene I need to do my warm ups by myself <laughs> yes and to some degree that's valid but there's a way to do it in a polite way and a way to do it as a piece you can of shit. ask or you can kick out <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, and to me it's like uh, that was always frustrating to me of like what they're getting opportunity and I don't think they should get opportunity and not because of quality of work just like as a person I don't think that that's the person who's going to succeed and uh, it was something comforting in the Brian philosophy of like no, stay the course. Those people will get weeded out. They they won't last in some capacity, whether it's the quality of their work, whether it's the way they treat people, like that doesn't sustain yeah. you. Yeah. And there's something comforting of like, oh, these little things are like, they seem tedious. It seems hard to be nice to people sometimes, but like that is the more fruitful way to pursue this thing. Uh, and I, I try and keep that in mind as we come across <laughs> these dickheads routinely in our lives. <laughs> um Fire. Uh, where's Face of Death in? So Face of Death is also a demo that uh, we talked about the t- song title. <laughs> uh, it comes, yes, from a great place. Uh, is that also a demo? Is that a Lucas demo? Where does this thing originate? Face of Death is a me demo. Hell yes. I was in a band long, long ago, Luna Tides. Yes. And yes, I yes, yes. had written that riff, just the main first riff that comes in, and never did anything with it. I could never figure out where to go. Because I, I was always trying to think in a mindset of what's new, what's different, what can I do? But then joining No Eye, there was an element of like, well, anything I do is new at this point. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a fresh start. This is something different. So I was able to kind of get my mind off 
that perspective and just be like, what is a good song? What flows the best? What can I write? And once like once I had decided I'm gonna take this riff and make a no I thing, this riff I've had since 2017 became a song in like a day. Like Hell it yeah. just flew together once I knew that. It was like, yeah, okay, this is how it's gonna be. Hell yeah. And Caleb, talk to you about like adding a new voice into the band. I think it's always challenging where it's like, no I exists and Jake mm -hmm. is coming in with a new idea and it's like you wouldn't have brought him in if you don't like his ideas, but there is right. also some sense of like, hey, don't rock the boat. Like, yeah, yeah. stay the course here. Like, was it easy to welcome in a new idea? Was it, yeah, challenging at times? Like, what was kind of the process of inviting in a new a new set of brains here? Uh, I mean, with like Jake specifically, like very easy. You know, like he's very talented, very yeah. driven. So like it was a uh, easy, yeah, like. <laughs> like, <laughs> like oh, please. Good news, good news. <laughs> yeah, definitely good news. He said, uh, actually, we're kicking him out yeah. after today. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, uh, yeah, he just like brought like a lot of good stuff to the table, you know. So we were like very happy to work with him, and he's very welcome to you know be in the band, and you know like everything that we've been able to accomplish since he's joined has been like great, you know. Like we're just excited to keep moving forward and keep rocking and rolling. Hell yeah! <laughs> For you, yeah I, I think was there, there was a bit of a learning curve with it where I was trying to figure out, you know, what elements of my writing are no I and what elements are like kind of not what we're going for. Mm -hmm. But I think there was also an element of these guys kind of considering what elements of Jake do we want to mm. take into. I, like, I feel like at first it was definitely a little bit, I wouldn't say a problem, but something to work on. Sure. And I feel like through this process of writing all the songs, we really figured out where those two kind of ideas meet in the middle and kind of yeah. have a own sound that's a blend of what No I was, yeah, yeah. what I was doing, and so on and so yeah, forth. Yeah, it's actually, I think it was like, kind of worked really well too because we like eternal lung the last ep we dropped that was a part of, that was actually supposed to be an album we just decided to take half the album because half of it sounded one way very melodic and the other half was very heavy so our plan was to drop after eternal lung something very heavy and chaotic and i feel like jake really complimented that so yeah. like it just made the transition like really smooth as well. I'm always curious yeah. about this because I feel like it's something that I, as a director, I'm always challenging of like uh, when Noah Seen invites me to do a video, like I, I don't want to reshape what Noah Seen is, but you're also not inviting me to do what you've also done. Mm, and so there's true. always this challenge yeah. of like I want to make the video that I want to make, but it has to be in conjunction with Noah Seen. And there's this uh, challenge of where do these things overlap? And as I work with bands over time, like with Half Hearted now, I feel like my ideas are their ideas. Like we've worked together enough that there's almost like a, a perfect synergy there where yeah. it's like, it's You're very like their rare. Fifth member. Yeah. <laughs> it's very rare that I send them an idea and they go, no, no, no. And it's very rare. They send me an idea and I go, no, no, no. Like it's, you've worked together enough where if that idea was a no, 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 before you even send it, or before they even say it, they're going to know he's not going to like that. Yes. Yeah. But that took, 10, 12 videos to get yeah, to. And I think yeah, yeah. In, uh, most videos are not the 10th or 12th. Most videos are the first time I'm working with someone. Uh, and that's always a challenge that I'm curious, yeah, on the band side of it. It's like, it is the same thing. Like we are, it's, yeah, joining a band. I feel like I'm joining a band every month in a sense. Of like, <laughs> yeah, and then I of, leave yeah. and then 10 months later, I come back in the band and join you guys yeah. for another month. And like, that's kind of the cycle. And, and so at I'm that always, point, that band could be in a different place than they, they were before. Oh, yeah. are. You could yeah. have this perception of them and then they come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe that last song was really heavy, but like, here's a ballad. Now hold your out vision. how to do us. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. new vision. And I'm, yeah, same for me, right? I could be yeah, going yeah, through, right. like right now I was in a green screen phase. Sometimes I'm in a dark phase, black and white, whatever the fuck is interesting to me at the time. It's like, yeah, where do I how do I make sure that this thing overlaps with you guys? It's always a really challenging problem. And it's to me, it's like, yeah, I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to come in and redefine what you are, but if I'm not adding anything to the pot, then like, what's the point? What's of the that? point yeah, of this? Yeah. And it's always tough to take that risk. And like when I'm sending the treatment, it's like the first time I send a treatment is the scariest one. Cause it's like, they literally could say no to a hundred percent. Start over. <laughs> <laughs> and it happens. And that's a, yeah. a valid thing. And I'm curious. Yeah. When you're joining a band writing, it seems like an even more intimate thing where it's like, the music video isn't your expertise. That's why you're outsourcing. That's why you're asking me. The music is your expertise. That's where like <laughs> coming in with a guitar is a much, to me, a much more complicated thing than coming in with a camera because like they've had guitars for a while. Like yeah. they, they, especially it's not, not they just haven't had guitars. It's a very guitar centric band. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. like that's kind of the lead role in a lot of places is what the guitar is doing. Yeah, and so it's like that was very important to get that kind of playing style right and oh, not yeah. just. You know, if I went in and did some licks that I thought were cool but sounded nothing like anything they've ever done before, people are going to be like, okay, yeah. well. What if we put down tempo breakdowns here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, that might yeah. be cool, but that's not that's not the trajectory we're on. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think it's uh, like 
Noai is seen as like very grounded because shout out Sam and Lucas, like they're also like very talented musicians. Yeah. They write for no I is seen as well. There's no one um, in the group that doesn't contribute to the writing. It, it, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So like we like like we know like what our sound is, like we know what we want to go for like at all times. So like I think having that like identity like kind of like also helps Jake know like what we're looking for rather than like coming into something new and going, here's what I got. Like is this is this fitting? I don't know, yeah. you know. So like I think that also helps too. How much are we like defining the identity? How much are we saying like this is what we want to be? How do we get there? And how much are we like I almost think of identity as like a sculpture thing where it's like there's this big rock and we're just cutting away the pieces of it that aren't it and then you're left with this like replica. Like, yeah, how intentional is the brand? How much you guys are following what sounds cool? Like, is there is there a meeting before where you guys sit down and go, okay, we are aiming for blank or is there just kind of a more organic way of going about this? Personally, I felt like when I came in, there were probably, what, three, four songs Yeah, I think done. we had, like, a quarter, like, that were, like, definitely, like, in. So yeah. I just kind of took the approach of, all right, this is the sculpture I'm seeing so far. What can I tack on to make it a better overall thing? Like, Face of Death came from me deciding to use that riff was we had a lot of softer songs at first. And so they were just kind of like, we need something heavier, we need something heavier. And I was like, I got this heavy riff. You know, I can fit that into the sculpture mm -hmm. here, and it'll fill out that overall design. So I think you kind of start with just throwing shit out the wall and seeing what sticks. And then once you've got some shit sticking, then it's like, all right, let's make this into art and not just a bunch of sticky shit goes a wall. long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stickies on a wall. <laughs> <laughs> For you, Caleb, is it the same thing? Like, yeah, I guess I'm curious. Like, is there is there a concrete definition of what no eye scene is or wants to be? And I guess I guess what I'm motivated here is like for me, it's like I I'm bad at setting a five year goal. I'm bad at setting a big picture. I'm very good at saying what do I want to do right now. But I understand that part of growing a business, a brand of anything, is saying where are we in five years and how do we get there? There has to be some some forethought here. And I'm curious, yeah, how much is that affecting you guys, or how much are you happy to live in the moment with it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's like probably like very different between all of us individually. But like the way I see it is like you know. No I is seen is what we create. You know, like it's what we decide to do. Um, it's it's the art. That's like the most important thing for me, you know. Um, you know, like we could like try to make like just like the most like accessible type of music we can, but like I think we just choose to be more like true to ourselves, you know, and I think that I, I like to ride the art over like the perfection of it, I guess. Yeah. I, I think that's a good way to put it with true to yourself too. Because I think what we want it to be and what that sculpture ends up looking like will change by the time we're doing a next release. Yeah. You know, that'll be a totally different thing. But the consistent element will be we're staying true to what we want to do and what feels authentic to us in that moment. And there's always this weird balance of like, we don't want to do only what we've done, but we can't reinvent ourselves every time we do something. And so as I was working on Moonglade, it was the same thought to me of like, this has to be true to no ISD. Like, is, this is going to be what Peter wants it to be. There's going to be some element of me in there, but that has to overlap. And I think when you mentioned Moonglade, uh, yeah, the reflection of moon on the water to me was like, okay, got it. This is like the ethereal thing that yeah. ties us to know I seen. And it's a way to connect to the brand. Uh, and the fun part for me was like, what else do we do? I know we talked about doing like green screen mirrors and like all those other crazy, yeah. we had a bunch of <laughs> ideas floating ideas, around. Yeah. We really it's, just, it's, speaking of throwing shit at the wall, we really just threw shit at you <laughs> and we're like, all right, make a video. Which is what I like. For to me, yeah. it's like, it's not your job to tell me what the video should be. It's your job to say like, what if? And then it's my job to summarize all this stuff into something that can be cohesive and like, so yes, please keep throwing shit at the wall. That is how Hell I yeah. like to operate here. Um, but it is a weird problem to me of like, yes, then where does this thing? And I, uh, the mirrors was an interesting problem to me of like, green screen mirrors wasn't going to work. And so then how do we use real mirrors in a way that feels new and unique? And mm. it, uh, yeah, when I saw there's a skate clip uh, that I know I showed you guys, like a guy skating past all these mirrors and it was like, bingo, got it. Yeah. Uh, but even then it was like the moon glade reflection is the reflection in the water. It's about the moon. It's not just the reflection. It's the, the moon, like the larger than life part and it's earthy. And it's like, right. how do we get this in? And so then the, the rocks in the sand come in here. Uh, um, <laughs> I feel like you guys would have had no idea what the fuck I was talking about <laughs> before it ever came together. Because I didn't quite know what I was talking about until it came together. So, like, I felt like I knew what you were talking about. We were going in to shoot. I was, like, driving up to Lucas's. And I was like, I think I know what he's doing. And then we got there and you started setting it up. And I was like, I have no idea yeah, what yeah, he's doing. Much. And then you started filming and showing us some of the shots. And I was like... Okay, I, I, once again, I'm on the same wave. I get it now. But at first, when you just started throwing shit on the mirror, I was yep. like, I don't know. What this <laughs> is 
that's always the scariest like 30 minutes to me of like we got all the way here i know they believe in me but i know once i start putting sanded rocks it's gonna look crazy it's gonna be so (laughs) like what the i just did a video and i will happily tell you more about it after i can't talk about it now but i built something in my basement in the preparation for it it was one of those things that i built and i went upstairs hi kitty uh i (laughs) went upstairs to like get a drink and i came back down and i looked at it i was like Oh no, <laughs> like I fucked it. And then it's like in camera it worked and I was like, okay, this is gonna work. And then it was about sending it to the band being like, I know this looks embarrassing right now, but when I can make these three changes that I can do on location that I can't do in my basement, this has a chance to work and it will work. And thank God it did. Uh, yeah. But there is, yeah, that weird moment of like, oh man, <laughs> if they see this I'm in between in it now. step, yeah, this middle step, and it's like, yeah, it is so hard to plan because nothing is quite the same on set as it is in preparation. So it's always this like approximation of like, yeah, how close can I get to what we're going to do? But like, I can't do that whole day twice. Like that's wildly impractical to yeah, do all that yeah. demoing and all that practice and whatever. Um, that day, uh, I think also worth noting that, yeah, we filmed all that in like a one car garage, which I think is cool in the hindsight of like, we started going, where do we film? What kind of location? And, I, and Luke was like, I have a garage. <laughs> and it was one of those where I, I I feel like for you guys, it was like, I don't quite know if a garage is the best place. And to me, it was yeah, like, yeah. no, we can do it. It yeah. 100% will work. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that was mainly a you and Lucas thing where you guys were like, we'll make we'll make this yeah, work. Yeah. And we were like, I, yeah, I was I, like, I've seen I his garage. Lucas, I trust Peter, but I, yeah, yeah, I was like, I've seen his garage. <laughs> it's it's a little small. Like, is that going to work? But when you guys clear everything out, I was like, all right, all right. When you guys cleared everything out, thank oh, yeah. you very much. <laughs> Yeah, and of course, it was not a warm day at all. We were all no. shivering and, I was, yeah, bragging that thankfully I was bundled up. But you guys are in stage class. You guys were braving the elements for us all we day. We have the advantage of being the jacket band. So <laughs> True. Okay. We the style was on your side. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, playing your aesthetic around the music video <laughs> shoot instead of the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold, so we will be yeah. in the jacket. Yeah, next <laughs> month, tank tops. <laughs> <laughs> yes. More turtlenecks. Let's go, boys. <laughs> turtlenecks in July. No way. Oh <laughs> turtlenecks in July sounds like a parody band of Texas in July. It does. But <laughs> they just do like kids bop covers essentially <laughs> i heard a kids bop cover of uh not like us the um the kendra how do you even do that wait what? how do you even do that <laughs> instead of a minor it was cooties <laughs> it's like, like dude it it's wild that's so funny it's you need so to after sick. we this you need to show me that it's oh, beautiful man. i heard like a little clip of it so i'll happily yeah dive there's so much videos. irony around all yeah, that yeah there, there, oh, there's man. so many levels of like why is that the one you did it's I I don't know if it was like actually kids bop or if it was an AI. It's like, gotta be AI. That's I'm what I was thinking. It's AI. I was like, it's gotta be AI. Because it's insane to I not hope they didn't be. have kids do that. <laughs> <laughs> People do weird. I don't like. I'm God. There is a budget for everything out there. Hey, the song exists for a reason. So mm-hmm. there's a market. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, yes, I totally lost all our train of thought here. Uh, it was cold. It was windy. Uh, yes, the wind was a nightmare that day, uh, but that's not really that fun to talk about. Um, anything else that I'm forgetting from that day of film? I feel like it all shockingly went pretty smoothly. Like yeah. we, yeah, the mirror looked absurd, uh, but it, it worked. <laughs> it took a while, but it worked. Uh, I think the one other part of that that I don't know if I mentioned to you guys is that there's like uh, textures in the video from water, uh, and so I got like the probe lens, which was like that long, like yeah, long. I don't know how the fuck you describe it. Long cylinder looking thing that like yeah. got us some cool shots where it feels like we're more amongst the rock and the mirrors and all that shit. Uh, I went out and I filmed like the day or two before the video. Have to like test the lens and have to get the textures um, in a stream up the park or at a park up the street. There's like this little stream flowing. And being outside filming with a camera in fucking February, and I'm literally walking into the water, like taking my shoes off to walk into the stream to film <laughs> it. Two degree water. <laughs> and people are walking their dogs bundled up and looking at me and it's like, oh, this is a really weird thing that I get to do. It's this weird like moment of gratitude almost of like, Oh, I'm so glad I get to freeze my ass off in this stream in February. They think I'm a drug addict out here, like, <laughs> just fucked up and trying to figure out my life. And it's like, no, actually, this is what I want to be doing. Like, I'm sober and intentionally doing this, and it's great. But, yeah, I guess from the outside looking in, it doesn't quite appear that way at times. Um, hell yes, Kings. Um, fire. The mo- uh, green screen stuff there is also fun. Caleb, we filmed all that here. Yep. Uh, again, we are talking before, like, I think green screen is a weird thing of, like, you just don't know what you're getting. Um, and there must have been a weird part of walking into my apartment being like, okay, pretend you're on a balcony and there's wind and rocks and yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. And De- definitely that like aspect of like, I am just in a house and there's a green wall <laughs> behind me. Like, like you have to act like you're just not in that spot. So that's definitely the, the, the hardest, I would say, part of that. <laughs> Was that like one of, your, one of your first times doing green screen? Like, I assume there's not a huge like ex- wealth of experience before it. I think so. I, I don't think I've... 
Yeah, I think that'd be the first time. Is there anything I can do to make that more comfortable? Like, how do I help you guys, like, envision or, like, understand it? Is it as good as it can be? Is there anything I can do to, like... Yeah, I feel like it's uncomfortable by nature. Yeah, and- definitely uncomfortable by nature just because, like, I mean, it's really up to the person who's, uh, you know, acting it out to really, like, get themselves in the moment for sure. Yeah. Certain, like, things, I, yeah. certain things could help someone and hurt someone else, you know? Yeah, yeah. Interesting, yeah. Because, yeah. like, let's say, like, if the green screen you're at, like, outside, like, you just put a fan, like, hair mm-hmm. blowing, like, you can really feel it. But, like, you know, like, if it's just, like, a static, like, thing, <laughs> like, how, how are you going to pull that off? You know? <laughs> there's a cat your feet. Yeah, there's a cat he was watching the whole time, though. He was, dude. Yeah. My he supervisor. Was great job. We yeah. should have put great him in job. a video. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. That's, that's the next goal. Yes. I don't think he's made it into a video, actually. Next I, time. Next I time. I did a short film that he made it into, but the short film never got finished, never got released. So I think technically he's yet to make his on screen debut. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now the game is He's worked turn. in the industry, but he hasn't <laughs> debuted yet. Yeah, <laughs> correct. His IMDb is a little weak, but he has the <laughs> job experience. He just needs an opportunity. Okay. Needs an opportunity here. He just needs his big break. Right. Hell yes. Um, anything we want to say about anything we can look forward to for No Icing? I think we've, yeah, again, my assumption here is always that if there's one song, if there's two songs, there's probably more coming. But yeah, I don't, I know bands are always, uh, keep their cards close to their chest about the future and all the things coming up because we have release schedules and all the things that need to be, uh, need to be held. Uh, is there anything we want to say for people who are looking for more No Icing? Is there anything we can uh, hint at coming forward? Or are we keeping everything, keeping everything where it is right now? There will be plenty more. Plenty more. Yeah. Well, we'll at least have another song out for sure. Yeah. yeah. At least a song. Yeah. At some point. At least yeah. a song. And then after that, <laughs> <laughs> that so. everything's up in the air after that. No, no. We got, we got, we got a lot coming this year. Uh, Hell yes. Definitely, definitely a lot coming. So. Hell yes. Uh, is this like the worst time of release to you guys where it's like, we have something out, but there's not, no. we can't talk about all the yeah, things. No. The this- worst time was like before a couple of days ago when we have everything done yeah, and yeah. nothing out and we're just sitting there like. Pretty much from. December 31st to when the song <laughs> came out was just purgatory in hell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're just like, now we're chilling. I'm, you're just like, I'm sitting on literally everything and I just can't, I can't tell anyone, can't show anyone. You know? Are you guys big on <laughs> leaking it to friends? Are you guys like, I'm always 50 50 on this. Like, there are times when I do a video and it's like, I just want to show everyone. Fuck it. And there's yeah. also the thing of like, no, nah, this one's for me. I'll wait till everything's out. Yeah. Where are you guys in this thing? Are you big leakers? Are you keeping cards close to your chest? It depends on the friends. Okay. You know, sure. there's certain yeah. people that yeah. like I value their feedback and I wanted to know like I you know, especially people I've worked with before in previous projects, you know. What do you think about this? Is everything going together the way I see it or am I just in my head about it? Mm-hmm. So, I I'll show a couple people, but it's really like a pretty small circle of people I've worked with before that are in that group. It's also yeah. nerve wracking because like you value their opinion, but their opinion's almost irrelevant at that yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's kind of done. So I hope they say they like it, but if they don't say that, then mm. I want to know it. That way, I know if people are gonna tell me it sucks. You know what I mean? I w- it won't be the first time I've heard it when I release the song. Sure. And people are like, this shit sucks. You sure. know, at least my boy I know says I love. He'll tell me. <laughs> Fair. And then when the song does come out, how how are you guys at like internalizing feedback? Like I think I'm terrible at internalizing feedback. I think like. When I do something, like what I think of it is what I think of it. And yeah. you can tell me it sucks. You can tell me you like it. And I, I don't care. And I yeah. wish I was better. With, like, I wish I could feel the love more sometimes. And I'm I wish, in the same boat. Yeah, I'm, that, I'm the same way. I don't yeah. care about the love or the hate. You could tell me it's the worst <laughs> thing you've ever heard or the best thing. And I'd be like, cool. It, yeah. And it's this weird yeah. thing. It's, like, it's not that I don't care. Like, I wouldn't have made it if I didn't yeah, want yeah, you yeah. to like it. But it's like. I don't know. This is for me. That's for you. Like, yeah, yeah. And, find your own place. And it's also like it's not made for an individual person. You know, mm-hmm. some guy coming up to me and telling me, I liked what you did before better. It's like, okay, well, there's six other billion people <laughs> on the planet that this will hopefully reach. And maybe they'll feel a different way. You know, it, it's not like for any individual person. It's yeah. for myself as an individual. And then it's for a collective kind of idea of people. It seemed like there was a lot of positive outpouring, though. Like, yeah, Caleb, were you able to, like, feel any of the any of the positives to get through? Or is it all this, like, yeah, for me, yeah, for me, it doesn't. But I'm curious how. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you know, like when you like on the day of like a release, like you're just like, you know, usually like there's like a lot of people just kind of flooding you with like nice things. And it's like very appreciated, you know, Um, but like it kind of just like it's very overwhelming just because it's just like all at once, you know, so it's kind of hard to like really like feel it. Um. But yeah, 
I think it's yeah. also hard to it's find. Little, like, it's a little, it's like kind of hard to explain. It's a very weird feeling. One thing for me is like, it's hard to, most compliments don't mean anything. And there's a rare compliment that does, but it's very hard to like articulate the thing in a way that gets through. Where like saying good job is right. one of those, like, it's like, I appreciate you telling, like, yes, that is, I'm glad that we got here. <laughs> yeah. but like, it doesn't do enough for me to do anything. And I'm like, yeah. Um, I assume for you guys, there's elements of like maybe the tapping rip or something. It's like, oh, that sounds cool. And it's like, sounds cool. is isn't quite like if someone said, and I don't know music at all, but if you're like the way you use the minor third there, like that might land with you. But yeah. So like the thing that I've gotten the most as a compliment since joining No I, that really gets to me more than any other one. I've had a couple of motherfuckers come up to me and be like, your bends are so good. <laughs> and that's such a specific thing yes. that it's like, I can feel good about that one. But then someone coming up and being like, oh, you're such a good guitarist. I'm just like, that's abstract. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You give me something specific, like the bend was perfect, even though that was one part of the set, not the whole thing. It's like, yeah, I relate to that one more because it's like, I really worked for that. I tried mm. for that. Thank you for acknowledging that. Yeah. Uh, to that point, I almost texted you the other. I almost texted you the other day, and it felt <laughs> it felt too dumb to text you about. Okay. <laughs> I was listening to Moonblade and Face of Death, and the way that you pronounce your T's was very like oh, no. very satisfying. <laughs> okay, I, really cool. loved, I was like, I was like, prepared for the worst. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Normally, when people say like "don't," it's "don't" or whatever, and the, I know it's always the the emphasis on trying to get the T. And I know it's a big thing with producers, and that's part of their job is making sure that you're enunciating. Yeah, everything. yeah. And your T's felt very crisp, but it like, somehow funny. was like vibrating I'm, my brain in the right way. I'll be like on the way home, like listening to the songs, <laughs> like listening for every. T sound because like right now I'm just like wait what he's gonna I, find one that wasn't good and be like shit we gotta go back God, to the studio God, Roger said he liked that I wish I could tell you yeah what what in the song got me but it was yeah as I was listening to the other day and it was like satisfying very nice I like that though feature. it's a specific thing it's yeah. not like a general this was good it's like this thing that you did specifically stands out to me I always run into the issue of like band send me songs and I go oh it sounds like X band that I like. And what I always forget there is like just because I like X band doesn't they might mean hate that band. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I, yes, I don't. Know. There are times where I've been like, oh, this sounds. I love this. Sounds just like blah blah blah. And they go, what? <laughs> and I always have this thing. Thanks, like, asshole. I'm not a music person, right? Like, when you're when we're talking about this, like I don't have a sense of like, oh, the you used the scale, right? <laughs> like I don't. This was a Eulidian minor, or whatever the fuck <laughs> words are. Like I don't. Like, it's all dumb. Okay, like, it sounds like a song, or it doesn't sound like a song. And even then, like. I don't like saying something's a good song because it's like, who am I? I'm not the arbiter of good or bad. Like what I'm saying is this thing sounds cool to me, but yeah. that doesn't mean it's good. I like a lot of music that is objectively bad. <laughs> <laughs> so like if me liking it might not be the best co-sign. Yeah, and yeah. it's always this weird thing of like, yeah, how do I tell you guys that I like it and do it in a meaningful way? Because most ways of communicating that are not meaningful. I always yeah. try whenever I'm talking to anyone about their music Rather than saying good or bad, I try and give them one specific element that I really appreciate mm -hmm. about it and one specific element that's like a constructive criticism they can do better. That way there's something where it's like this specifically is something different that you're doing, mm -hmm. but like there's always some, anyone can always get better. So I don't want to leave it at just, you did a perfect job. You know, I want people to be able to improve from it too. Mm -hmm. So I always try and give people, I really liked this, this element, maybe it's not bad, but it could be better. Yeah. I, like any like like form of feedback, like whether it's just a good or bad song, it's all like really appreciated. But I feel like the ones that really make like a big impact on like, you know, like me like listening to what you're saying, like is like the really specific ones. Like like you said, like when they like kind of pick something out that's like not abstract. You know, those go like a real long way. It's always sure. yeah, yeah, always tough. And I'm curious. Then uh, I like to ask people what they like about working with the folks they work with. So I know we worked with Sean and Chris Wiseman on this, and all. Uh, yeah, it gets. Uh, Start with Sean for the sake of starting somewhere. Like, what do we like about working with Sean? Like, what makes Sean the the right fit for this production? Like, uh, and I think why I ask this is because I'm always curious of like the things that stand out to you guys are not always the obvious things. And I've asked people about music video directors, and my favorite answer one time was he brings snacks, and it was like, that's hell yeah. Wait, wait a minute, Sean brings snacks? Is he holding out on us? Because I don't remember no he snacks. Got the chip box, bro. He got the chip box. Oh, you know you're right. You're right. He did have the chips. Uh, I'm saying I've asked people about. Other, Video directors, and they said that, and oh, it's something that I learned from. It's like I'm bringing food now. I'm gonna bring donuts. I'm gonna bring Trulies. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, bring something. Yeah. Like I'm a. That's something that people. I of all the things that you do in a video, it's like I never would have thought about food. It's as a, a thing. small thing, but when you're working out there for 12 hours, sometimes it makes a difference. Oh, yeah. So what's the small thing about Sean? Yeah, what do we love about Sean? What was something great that he did that really felt like it was the the right fit for No I Seen here? Um, I, so I'm gonna speak on both Sean and Chris together. Perfect. Because I feel like they were a perfect combo for us because I feel like they work in very different but kind of juxtaposed ways. 
I feel like Sean is a lot more uh, nurturing of the creative process. There's a lot more freedom to try a bad idea and then be like, fuck this, this is a bad idea. Whereas Chris is more likely to keep you on the straight and narrow and make sure you're getting the job done. And I feel like both of those were very important elements to have while we were recording the album. I don't think it would be as good if we had just gone on the straight and narrow or we had just gone on the more loose flowing creative path. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would have turned out as good as having both of those elements working together. Interesting. Mm-hmm. What uh, what processes were done with both people? What's well, like the what is each one of them credited with in the process of these songs? Um, we did all of the instrumentals with Wiseman, and then probably ninety percent, eighty percent of the vocals. Yeah, I'd with say Sean. like three fourths. Of yeah, the not album all was of the done. vocals with Sean. Some was yeah. done with Chris, but the vast majority of the vocals were done with Sean. Yeah, hell yeah. Was that a similar process for you? Like, that, yeah, that yin and yang idea? Like, what did you appreciate about working with them? Yeah, I mean, like, they're both, like, they're actually, like, both, like, in terms of vocals, like, very, like, similar. They, they give me, like, freedom to just, like, do what I need to do. They're, like, very good at giving their, like, opinions um, or, like, any, like, sort of critiques when I'm, like, in the booth doing stuff, which is, like, great because, like, it's, like, kind of the worst when you're, like, recording and, like, you're just, like, is this, like, turning out good? And they're just, like, yep, thumbs up, keep going. You know, so like that, that's always great. It's like working with someone who's like very good at like telling you things um, like while you're like in the booth, because especially like when you're like in the moment, it's like kind of hard to like, you know, like they're like the fresh ears, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, like where you, like I said before, like I've heard this a million <laughs> times in my head, you know, so uh, the, yeah, that's, that's the thing that I like a lot with working with both of them. I yeah. think it's also good that, um, I think all of us, as every member of the band, has a pretty good personal relationship with Chris and mm-hmm. Sean, both. Um, if I quit music tomorrow, it would not be the last time I talked to Chris or Sean. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I would still hit them up just in my personal life about things. So I think that really helps when it comes to getting that feedback. There's a trust that we've built up with both of them over... I've known both of them for 10 years. You know, I can't speak for everyone else yeah. in the band, but I've known both of them for like a decade at this point, so... Mm-hmm. I think that is super important with that kind of relationship. I'm curious particularly about the vocal stuff because I think with the guitars, it it seems easy in my brain that someone goes, hey, just add a fret here or just skip this. Or, yeah, there's very specific and, like, actionable things where it feels like vocally it's a much more, like, abstract way to give feedback. And I feel like when you're in the booth, it's a lot more of, like, try that more, try that rougher. And it's like rougher isn't a a 17th fret. Like, there's a very different (laughs) thing there. I like, can't change my tone knob and get rougher on my voice. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Talk to me about the process of like receiving the feedback vocally. And it's like, yeah, what is, what are, uh, yeah. What is the feedback that we're getting? And like, is it, is it tough to action? Or are they good at communicating those things? Like, yeah. What is that process? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like I kind of go into the studio with like a very, like, like I, I have like a way I want to do it, but then I also like to try like, different things. Mm-hmm. Like I'll like be like, maybe I should sound a little harsher on this part or maybe like, should I have more like, you know, stay, like, more straightforward, clean on this section and whatnot. And, like, even, like, with... There's, like, a song on the album with that we did with Chris. Um, I did the melody, and then I did the harmony, and he goes, what if, like, the harmony was, like, the main instead of the melody? And mm-hmm. I was like, oh. And then he did it. Like, he, like, changed the levels, and it, like, sounded, like, way better. I was like, oh, damn. You know, so, yeah, just, like, little things like that, you know? Hell yes. I also uh, was in Chris's space not too long ago for a guitar video with him, and, like... There is something about sitting there and looking up at the shadow intent in Kern's records, and you go, oh, okay, well, I'm in good hands here. <laughs> like, I, I'm going to be honest. What gets me more than the records is the wall of, like, 15 yeah. guitars. Oh, yeah. That's what gets me. I look oh. at that, I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's also the, the plaques, like, the, all yeah, the credentials yeah, of shit. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, you, you've you been to a couple places, huh? You've been a few places. Yeah. You've been around once or twice. <laughs> you've been this a couple your of first people. rodeo. <laughs> yes. Um, I am transitioning gears here, uh, and this is, yeah, something we'll kind of end on. It's a little bit, yeah. Not no I seen related. Uh, I <laughs> I was in therapy for a while, and I feel like that was a great thing, and I feel like I've learned a lot of things that I need to learn about myself there. One thing that I think is like there's occasionally things that pop up in music when it's like I would love to chat about this, and the podcast has then become the home for me to like vent these things. Uh, so again, very much changing gears here. But the the one that came to my brain is there was something in the last week uh, of another musician getting canceled, of the world falling apart for them, and it was uh, abuse, and it was one of those bands that I grew up loving, uh, and it was one of those things of like. Thank God we know about this, but it, it's been a really tough time for me the last couple of years of like, 
I guess to be very clear, it's been much tougher for the victims of the abuse, right? I don't want to, I don't want to oversimplify and yeah, steal valid. I think but there like, is still a valid point to be made. It's hard for the fans of those people as well. Not and, nearly as hard, but it is a challenge. And the challenge for me is like I almost feel like I'm scared to fall in love with new bands because I'm looking at these bands. It's like it maybe it feels like every band has had an issue and it's not every band, right? right. It's probably 5% of, it's probably 10% of bands. Like it's a, yeah. a huge minority of bands that have had these issues. And like most people are maybe not good people, but not that bad of a person. Mm. Right. And there's a, a degree of evil, but it's really tough for me to like now buy into new bands. And it's like, who am I supporting? And it's so much easier for me to support no IC and for me to support half hearted for me to support people that I know currents. It's like, I am so much happier to buy a currents ticket than I am to go take a chance. And it's like, it's not fair of me to like write off the up and coming bands because I don't know them, but there is like almost a distrust that's been created from all the other shit we've seen come out. And I'm sure. glad it has come out. I'm glad people are getting to speak their truth. I'm glad that uh, history is correcting itself in some sense. Like it is all positive change, but it is a very strange thing. I'm curious, do you guys have the same like trouble attaching to new bands? Like, is there the same fear of like, who am I supporting? Who am I buying into? Am I overreacting in this thing? Like, where do we, where do other people land on this thought? I'm very much a separate the art from the artist person. As someone that's been in a lot of rooms with a lot of different bands and a lot of different things, I know that sometimes maybe someone's the face of the band and they've done something really bad. For all I know, the producer wrote that whole album by themselves in their room and just sold it to the band. Interesting, yeah. You know, so there's yeah. an element where like, and, and there's even other members in the band where it's like other people have poured their heart into this who aren't assholes just because this person's a sadistic asshole doesn't mean that like everyone associated with it, their hard work for years and years should be disqualified. Yeah. So I very much, I, I separate it. You can be an asshole and make good art and that's just that. And I'll sit there and say, fuck you. Maybe I won't go see your show. You know, that that's one thing, but it's like, I don't think, I, I think there has to be a certain level of separation. Otherwise, because it's like, where does that end? You know what I mean? No one's out here saying we're not going to play Michael Jackson songs on the radio because of what he did. And he definitely did it. But it's That's like, a weird one to me, you know, yeah. it, it, but yeah. it's like there's no juxtaposition. You've got these mm. small bands that are way smaller, have affected even negatively a lot less people. Yeah. But that you're going to be OK with and this you're not. And it's just like there is no standard or any way to judge it. So I just say if the music's good, the music's good. If the people are good, the people are good. If they're both, that's great. If it's one or the other, I'll accept that for what it is, and so be it. Yeah. 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 I, oh, no. Um, like, ever since, like, I started even going to, like, concerts or, like, listening to music, like, I, I've kind of noticed one thing, that people put musicians or just really anyone in, like, a social power on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And then they forget that all these people are just people. Yeah. And I think that's, like, a huge problem because, yep. like, then you're, like – thinking that these people are going to be morally different than anyone else when like there's going to be p bad people in your life, you know? Um, so I think that like changing your like scope I'm, like, static, and the way that you like perceive like musicians like really does help with that. You know, like it is one thing for like, you know, like I also like, you know, separating the art from the artist, but like, it's also like the action of the group, you know, mm -hmm. like it's really, you know, like if, if the whole band is like this, then like, then it's the band. It's not, you know, the individual, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? So um, I think that there's like just a lot of dynamics that go into this that people tend to like overlook. That's it's not a simple one yeah, or the other thing. Every situation is different and should be dealt with differently. It's and super people complicated. like to just hit it with this or this. Yeah. Yeah. You're canceled or you're not. And it's like, that's not really productive. That's not helpful for the victims. It's not helpful for the scene. It's not helpful for the fans. It's just easy to get likes on social media for. It's tough. I, I have a very specific memory of meeting Front Porch Step back before his <laughs> problems happened. Uh, I was at a, I think, I think it was an Attila show, which I guess is kind of funny in the irony That's itself. an interesting uh, blend. But it was uh, like 2014, 2015 or something like that. Uh, and we were in New York City and Front Porch Step wasn't performing. He was just at the thing and I was there with my buddy. And I remember meeting him and shaking his hand and being like, wow, love this song. Listen to him. And then like a week later, that thing all blows up. And it was like, I touched his hand. Like I, I don't I, know where that hand's been. It was this bizarre of like, listen, I'm not responsible. Obviously, I don't even of give course, a, It's not my problem. But like, I don't like being that close and like not knowing. And it was this yeah. very bizarre thing, like distrust that then created. And it's like, uh, I'm sure as you guys are out and at shows, you're meeting more bands. You're hearing more people who have met more bands. Like there's 
plenty of stories behind the scenes. And I, I think on a very small scale, I try and keep in mind that like, I don't know, when I was getting into shooting shows, there was always this thing of like, why are you shooting that band? I hate that band. He dates my girlfriend or my ex-girlfriend, whatever. Yeah, and yeah. to me, it's like, everyone has a problem a with someone. That. Like yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't let every problem creep in, but there are definitely some problems that I should creep oh, in yeah, and be respectful definitely. to. And it's always this weird thing to me of like, I don't want to be, I don't want to assume everyone's bad because that's going to make my life so hard. But it is so hard for me to go, are you front porch step? Am I in yeah. a week going to regret yeah, spending time yeah. with you and admiring you and like coming home and being like, I just met that guy. Wow. And it's like, yeah. fuck, I just, I don't want to give anyone that opportunity to burn me in that sense. And I'm not the one being burned. Again, I'll be very right. clear here that like, Yes, there are much bigger, much bigger victims here than I am. But it's this weird like distrust, and I, I think maybe that's part of me wanting to listen to the comfort music of like, I know this I is know safe. these are good. I uh, yeah, yeah yeah. If and, there was a problem, it would have came out by ten years into their career. Like so, I, that's obviously not always true, but unfortunately, hypothetically. Unfortunately, the one this week was one of those. It was yeah. one of those where it was like, oh, I grew up listening to them. And that went on for 15 years behind the scenes, and we didn't know about it. And yeah. just now we know about it. And it's, yeah, it's it's brutal, and I, I don't know how to make sense of it. Because, like, I don't want to be, yeah, distrustful of everyone. Everyone has a story about someone. But, like, I can't pretend this isn't happening. I can't go buy into a new band and not know there isn't a chance that one of them just beat someone up backstage. And yeah. it's like, that's... yeah the real shit reality of this. I think I've found one way that, and it's not perfect. You can't always tell. Yeah. But something that makes a difference to me and how I perceive people is what your reasons for getting into this is. Are yeah. you really invested in the musical process? Do you have a love of creativity and a desire yep. to release art into the world? Or do you just want the high school popularity fest of playing your local show and, you know, a couple girls come up and talk to you and it's like, those are the guys that... Mm -hmm you're more likely to get a problem with. Not every one of them is a problem and not every one of the creative types is okay. But I, I feel like there's probably a pretty solid 75% correlation between those paths and being a problem or not. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bizarre thing and I, I don't know how to make sense of it, but I've never, I don't feel like I've brought it up to other people and I'm, yeah. it's, yeah, this weird thing. Again, I keep going back to the idea of like, I don't want to distrust everyone. My mm -hmm. life will be impossibly hard if I go into every show and go, Everyone on the stage is an abuser. Like, I, yeah, that's going to ruin my own life. And it's not yeah. accurate. It's not fair to them. And yeah. most people aren't. Again, I was talking about, like, people falling. It's like, most of our artists haven't had issues like this. Like, most of them have been respectful. And I'm sure, again, I'm sure they've pissed someone off. They've had a breakup, whatever. But like, Everyone's got some problem. There, but there's, a, there's problems there's a and there's problem. serious problems. 100%. Yes. And it, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know how to make sense of it. And, again, it, it makes me skeptical then to support a new bands of, like, and I don't want to write off all the party bands because, like, just because you like to have fun and mosh doesn't mean that you're also moshing yeah, <laughs> domestically. <in the> <laughs> yeah. But, like, yeah, it's this bizarre, yeah, I don't want to judge a book by its cover, but, like, we kind of need to at this yeah. point. It, yeah. I don't the way know you to, present yourself means everything. Yeah. yeah. And, again, I don't want to hate the whole scene, but I also don't want to be dishonest with myself of, like, you know, there are, there are pieces of shit. And there are pieces of shit in every world. But I don't give my money to every world. This is yeah, the place yeah, I give yeah. my money. And this is the one that I've chosen to identify with, to grow up in, to, to nurture and support and love and buy T-shirts from. And it's like, damn, I've, I've given money to bad things before. And that's yeah. not, and not intentionally, right? right? But like, yeah, for sure some of the dollars have not ended up in the best pockets. I just said I was an Attila show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> but then we really want to get deep with it. How much of your clothes probably been made with like child labor in some other countries? 100%. This is there, where you want to draw There is yeah. no ethical consuming yeah. in our current system so it's like that's why i kind of separate the art and the artist because it's like I, I, if i'm gonna let that mindset get to me yeah. i'm not gonna buy anything ever from anyone and i'm gonna go live in the woods and be a hermit <laughs> and i'll be the most moral person you've ever met mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I, you can't live like that you just can't uh, that reminds me of a, an interesting point i was having with a, a friend who is vegetarian vegan i don't know exactly what their dietary choice was um, but it was kind of an interesting one, and I don't have any dietary choices. I'm, yeah, pretty open, and uh, they were also sober and very against a lot of a lot of those things as well. And it was one of those interesting where I – it was one of those, like, 3 a.m. kind of conversations where I felt like I could candidly pick their brain. And the question I arrived at is, like, listen, it's good we don't kill cows, but if we're eating vegetables, the pesticides are killing insects. And, like, we are still killing, and that's going to just yeah. – for us, and, like, there is – like, if this is about animals, then, like, let's drink only water. Like, I don't, I don't know what – I yeah, don't know what solution yeah. is, but, like – Let's be open about like there is no perfect. And the yeah. answer I got back was like, 
a hundred percent. And I'm just trying to minimize the harm that I do and control. And it's like, right. I like that philosophy. That's I can, all you can do. I, I can identify a, with that. That's yeah. a great mindset. Cause I, I think when it really becomes a problem is when you start asserting like a moral, like dominance mm-hmm. over other people. Yeah. Even though like there's, probably plenty of things that you do or consume in your life that is harmful to some other aspect yes. of someone and I think else. Jake's iPhone example you know, is a great one. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, so like there's really no like winning in that situation. I, I just feel like it's kind of like a, a mute point. You just gotta try your best. And yeah. That's kinda yeah. all you can do. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like stay true to yourself, like stick to the beliefs that you have, but like I feel like it's when you start like negatively imposing things on other people and you yeah. try to put yourself up. That's when that's like a, a no no. Yes, yeah. I agree with you on that. I think that's a good place a good place to end that. Um, I want to end on something more fun here because <laughs> that's not the most fun way to walk out of a conversation. Um, anything upcoming this summer? I know last time we were here, I don't remember which, might have been one of you or maybe one of your bandmates. We're talking about, like, we built bunks in the band. We had the whole van <laughs> set up and ready to go. <laughs> are the bunks still oh, functional? Boy. Are we still hoping to get more oh, use the out of them? The bunks are they're, still functional. They're functional. <laughs> the use of the van, not very functional. <laughs> the bunks are fine. <laughs> if I lost my home tomorrow, I could go sleep yeah, in got, the bunk. We got a place to go. <laughs> the van's not not gonna it's, move it's anywhere. Moving. <laughs> the bunks, that's the issue. <laughs> what is our van problem? Yeah, so the, uh, it's a, it's an enigma. You know, like there's, <laughs> we, we, ever since we got it, there's been something wrong with it. And there's like an engine problem. Coils keep bursting every time we take it out. Nice. So like basically it's only when we go far though. Right. If we do like shows <laughs> yeah. locally, it's fine. But last year we were on a run trying to go down to Indiana and we had to take it to a shop. And the guy was basically like, look, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. You can probably make it home if you leave after Ohio. You go to Indiana and then try and go home, you're not making it home. Yeah. And it was like, all right, well. Copy that. The decision's kind of made at that point. Yeah, so we were like, you know, like we had plans to like uh, hit the road starting right out the gate this year. Like things were confirmed and ready to go. Uh, And then we had to cancel, which is like a huge, huge blow. But like, you know, like with, um, with that extra time, it kind of, also help produce like our, our productivity with you know we have an album that we're going to be dropping you know this I year. I think this will be a lot better you know? for having not done yeah like it's going to give us more like time and energy to focus on that you know um and we were still able to play shows like we played um New Jersey this year we played in Boston and we played in Hartford so like we are still able to make it out to places mm-hmm. within reasonable distance uh but you know traveling and touring that's going to be probably something we're looking at you know after the album's done so Hell yes. Yeah. Are any of you guys car people? Like, I feel like I, I would be the most useless person in a van because, like, it's it drives or it doesn't drive. Yeah. That's about yeah. all I We're can all get to. in the same yeah. boat. Okay. I, I Something can, goes wrong with the van and we all just look at each other like, <laughs> yeah, where's I, the closest shop? <laughs> I can do basic maintenance, like, you know, oil changes and all that yeah. shit. I can, like, do an oil I can change, change my lights and spark okay. plugs, but, like, like Nothing like past that. You okay. know? Like if it's if it's like a a problem, like I'm not gonna be <laughs> taking apart my car, take out the engine, like you know, yeah. Like, yeah so I'm sure I could YouTube how to change oil or oh, tire or all sure, that shit. Yeah. But like, yeah, one of my friends was just on tour and she was explaining how like yeah she had to go in and talk about all of, and I was like. You're a saint. Like I would, me and my band, we we're we're still out in fucking Indiana, wherever the fuck we were. Yeah, like, yeah. there's no way we got home and yeah. figured that out. And it's straight up. It seems yeah, bands always have producers and they have all these like other skill sets. And I feel like mechanic is one of these skill sets that we should yeah try and get into more bands. If you play guitar and you're a mechanic, <laughs> feel it's okay for you to join the band. Yeah. We don't really want a second guitarist, but if you're a mechanic, we'll take you. Free pass. Yeah. Free pass. <laughs> in that case, we'll take it. I love the idea of a mechanic who can't play guitar but just goes out and buys a hundred dollar guitar and it's like, hey, now I'll, I am. I'll put it on the second guitars on a backtrack and just have you stand up there, just fix our van. <laughs> That's the most essential part of the band. We're also accepting triangle players as well. Okay. Yes. <laughs> if you're a mechanic, you don't, you can play anything. You can come up with the tambourine, the cowbell. I don't care. You guys know the Mighty Mighty Boss Toads. You remember, there is like a yeah. 14 piece ska band and one of the guys <laughs> in the band is that he's he dances he, on stage he's the mechanic and, uh, i assume yeah he was like, <laughs> he's got and, some other behind the scenes role uh they the story they give is that when they were in high school they just wanted him to come to the shows with them so they just said he was in the band and then he had no talent so he just get on stage and dance and to me it's like 
He's got to be a dealer. <laughs> like he's got to have like <laughs> hey, a mechanic. It could, it could be the vibes guy. You never he know. The driver, like I don't know what he's got cooking, but there's got to be. There's no way. You there's just some behind the scenes benefit to having him on stage. <laughs> yeah, dude. There's no way that just a plus one came through. And they're all grown men. I don't know anything about. I don't, yeah, uh, very clear. <laughs> that I don't know anything or anything. But it doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, I know bands. I know how tight the finances are. And if you're already traveling with 14 people, there's no way you're like. 15's cool. At, like at 14, you're like, we need eight. Like we yeah. gotta start <laughs> yeah. cutting yeah. down here. You gotta downsize. <laughs> and yeah, it's like, dude. And he still dances. My friend was a yeah. huge Boston's fan. And so like, they're sick. I'm a fan. Uh, I never quite, never quite my cup of tea. Anything with trumpets is cool with me. Uh, in high school, he loved them, and so he would go, and I was the music kid, so he would just drag me along, and I was happy to, yeah, but plus one free ticket. Sure, I'll go. Sure, you had a great time but anyway. He was like, go get front row, watch the whole thing, and they would put on like a three hour show. So to me, it was like. I like concerts, but this is too much concert for me. But yeah, my only takeaway from that is just watching this 60-year-old man dancing on stage and being like, brother, there has to be some other piece of this puzzle <laughs> that I'm not, I'm not touching here. Um, we did it. Friends, uh, Moonglade and Face of Death is streaming right now. Uh, no Eyes Seen is available everywhere on social media. Kale, we'll start with you. Where can people find you on social media? Where they to tell you that you're awesome, cute, adorable, beautiful, and great at everything? Uh, yeah, we are at No Eye Has Seen. Look it up on Facebook, Instagram. X, even though we should probably post more on there, but it's okay. Uh, Big yeah, tiki talking. Yeah, TikTok, that's true. Should also post more. On <laughs> yeah. There. We uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, YouTube, you know, you can find us all on there. Hell yes. Any personal socials we want to plug? Uh, yeah, just follow all the members. Uh, we got Jake Mills, we got Sam and Caleb NEHS, and we got, what was I think Lucas? It's, hey, it's Luke. Who, who's Luke? Who is Luke? Who's who is Luke? Luke? <laughs> Luke yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. I'll put links to everything down below. Um, I'm booking music videos, kind of. I always say I'm booking music videos. My mom listens to all these. And she goes, when? And I'm like, uh, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I don't got time. <laughs> so I'm kind of booking music videos. I want to be booking more, but I don't think I have time for much more coming up soon. Um, anyway, life's good. We did it. Episode 68 <laughs> in the bag. No, I've seen you guys rule. Cheers. Thanks for coming through. Cheers, Mr. Blood and Water. <laughs> we Empty can. <laughs>